Um, here are the cases that we're going to go over today. Uh, so one little thing I want to uh, make note of is there is this uh, new program where you could look at um, the Google communities to see uh, which cases we're in, and you're welcome to join. I appreciate it. If you can join, that would be really wonderful uh, as we go over cases, and that's what we're going to be uh, starting on today. Uh, so if I could start, um, there's one incident that happened in Pittsfield. I'm not sure which state this was in, in Massachusetts, um, where a man threatened his girlfriend at her workplace with a knife. Uh, the situation is he confronted her at uh, Macy's at the mall, and sadly enough, oh, go away, uh, we knew that it actually happened on Valentine's Day. Um, he approached her, uh, drew a knife, um, also a, a handled, manhandled um, his co her coworkers who came to intervene, which also demonstrates the issues around um, potential dangers for coworkers, for employers, and other clients as well. Uh, one thing that was um, interesting about this report was while this assault happened on Valentine's Day, the last incident occurred on uh, Christmas. Um, I'm trying to find this issue where he hit her in the head with a cell phone and threw hot sauce on her on Christmas Day. Due to that case, I believe there was um, a restraining order that was taken out. However, um, uh, this is just this one little note uh, that often gets dis discussed. Uh, the victim, uh, in both cases, were denied an extension of her restraining order because the judge learned that she had been in contact with him while he was in, ja in jail. So, um, this is a, a, an issue that comes up frequently with victims where there's contact made, and we don't know what actually happened in this case, but there's a chance that um, she needed to speak to him. We don't really know the circumstances of the situation, but the main thing is we see that uh, there's a high chance for this woman to you know, die, given the history of the violence, and there's got to be the support mechanisms and uh, processes there to help them, because if not, uh, these deaths are going to continue. Uh, moving on, um, we have a, a case just to show how um, men also can be victims of domestic violence. We have a case with a woman in Arizona who drove her uh, truck into his workplace. Um, the, uh, the vehicle belonged uh, to the man um, who was threatened. Apparently, uh, she went there, she ramps her truck through the, I suppose, the window. Um, hits him in at, while he's sitting at his desk, and she flees, but um, he, uh, sh she's uh, stopped from fleeing. Also, of course, that there's the note that she had the odor of alcohol on her breath. Um, we again, don't know the circumstances of this case, but here's just to show, once again, that uh, men could be victims of abuse as well, um, or certainly of, of the violence. Uh, in another case, uh, we have uh, something that happened, and I might mispronounce this, uh, Nels Brut. Uh, and to look that up, it's in uh, South Africa, um, over on the eastern edge. Uh, here we have a man who, uh, this is a pretty horrific attack. attack. He knew he was uh, infected with HIV. He was HIV positive, and so he drew some blood on a needle and then um, attacked his girlfriend at her workplace. Uh, she worked at a large retail uh, place, so you can imagine, again, lots of customers and clients around. Um, he attacked her in the parking lot shortly after she exited the car. So once again, I want to point out the issue regarding um, the, many of these incidents happening uh, at the end of the shift or the beginning of the shift in the parking lot. Uh, even in a foreign country, we see this this uh, dynamic still continuing. Uh, moving on, we have, and by the way, these are all recent events. This it was February 20th. I'm only uh, listing things, as you can tell, from maybe the past couple of weeks. Um, a man surrenders in Durham. He goes to a place called, I'm not sure where this is. I used to live in the Triangle, A.W. North Carolina. Let's look that up. Um, and uh, he apparently has some shots fired. I don't know where that is. Um, uh, uh, shots were fired. I don't believe anyone was hurt in this incident, but it's attempted first-degree murder. He flees, and then I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he um, turned himself in, but I could be wrong about that. I guess you can read it yourself. Um, Witnesses apparently say that he followed her uh, to her workplace, blocked her vehicle, then it fired multiple times um, at another man who was riding with Scott. So I'm not sure what the relationship was, but again, jealousy being a very uh, common 
issue in a lot of relationships, um, and especially in abusive ones, uh, we see how it can uh, lead to violence. By the way, I sent this uh, video as well to the uh, Google community, so you can try watching at the same time. I'm not sure if I click play if we'll get the same, uh, if we'll be able to uh, present it well enough, but here we have a man uh, who, this really wasn't at her workplace, but it was a workplace. Uh, this is the courthouse, actually. This man, uh, well, we have a 56-year-old man who uh, let, uh, apparently or uh, scientifically proven to be the father of uh, the baby inside a uh, 21-year-old Olivia Weaver. Um, and uh, the issue is that it was a paternity test ruling um, or hearing, and it, I, I suppose it was found out that the man actually uh, was the father, and he uh, is in dispute over that, I suppose, um, according to this report. Uh, fortunately, I believe that there were no deaths here, and that um, he was caught, and that fortunately that uh, the woman and her child are going to be safe now. Again, not, not her, her, her workplace, but a, um, a workplace for play, uh, court places, courthouses can be dangerous spots. Uh, moving on, we have a, a woman who died for, Okay, she died of uh, injury sustained in an acid attack. Um, the man follows her to her workplace, which was, I believe, this happened back in uh, November 14th, um, an internet cafe. He also had a knife, but he throws the acid in her face. A lot of it lands on the floor, and then he holds her face down into it. Uh, she dies from the um, burns that probably happened, I'm assuming, to her respiratory system. Um, the motivation, or we can see one of the the issues that was stated was um, that the parents, her parents, called off their uh, marriage, which was earlier arranged. Um, I'm not sure all the details of that. Um, had been in a relationship more than a year. Both families consented to them getting married, um, and uh, her family uh, deferred the marriage because they wanted their daughter to be married first. So. Um, the assault because it happened because of that stupid reason. This I have, believe happened in Australia. We have a man who choked uh, his ex girlfriend. Again, uh, just within this this past week, I guess a week, uh, just last Friday, uh, she fortunately was um, uh, she survived, but it, uh, she was found unconscious by a colleague. Uh, one of the notes about uh, choking is it could be regarded as simple assault because there's no weapon, and because even though she did go to the hospital and she actually fainted, if the person doesn't pass out. Um, you could, it's still a serious assault, but it still might be just considered a simple assault in some states. So um, it, it's even though this may not make those records saying, well, um, it's not an aggravated assault or felonious assault, um, it's still a, a pretty deadly lethal incident, potentially lethal. Uh, this case actually um, happened where uh, this man in Florida found out where he's a, a, allegedly distraught over his wife's alleged uh, affair. Uh, the man drives up to the workplace and starts firing into the building, not aiming at anyone, but sh shooting at the doors and windows. Uh, he is uh, later caught. The woman was not there at the time. Uh, fortunately, no one was hurt. Maybe he didn't intend anyone to be hurt, and he's just sending a message. But um, uh, obviously, someone could have uh, died in that situation. Another case, again, in India, we have uh, a man who uh, slits his wife's throat when she's working at a security, uh, a software firm, which was reportedly had good security because it was a high-tech firm. They're security personnel. They see him at, outside, and um, as I remember from the report, he says, I'm here to see my wife, and that way he, they let him in, and uh, the assault occurs. I believe he then uh, slits his own throat. Um, the issue here is that uh, while victims may not feel comfortable coming forward and telling their employers, uh, certainly if the security guards knew that uh, their relationship was strained, to say the least, um, they would have prevented him from entering. So uh, that's it for what I have to share for the uh, programs. Uh, I just want to thank you again for, for joining me, and uh, feel free, to, of course, to leave your comments below. I will be uh, posting this on our webpage. So thanks so much, and stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.